know this is kind of a pop culture topic, but I'm going to talk about some of the um, some of the things that we're not going to hear in the mainstream media regarding Joe Biden's inauguration uh, to become the 46th president of the United States. Um, first of all, I want to I, I want to reiterate this point. And that point being, uh, nothing is going to change with this administration. In fact, there's a good chance that uh, things will continue to get worse for a large group of people. Uh, And we're going to talk about why and how and all that kind of fun stuff. And right now... You know, D.C. is sort of like this hyper-militarized war zone. There's National Guard and the military's been, you know, and part of that is to take precautions of the events from January 6th. And part of that is because there's already a lot of information about some of these groups that are going to uh, hold some some kind of a demonstration, quote-unquote demonstration, um, at various different capitals across the country. Now, the thing that everybody needs to realize, as it was discovered within the blue leaks, uh, is is that the is law enforcement has worked side by side and hand in hand with white supremacists, with bigot, bigot, bigoted groups. Um, so, you know, I don't know, like, and then they let them into the Capitol itself. We saw that. I'm going to keep reiterating that point. The cops let them in. There was very few cops there, period, when they knew that this was coming. Um, and the National Guard was declined. They, they, they said no National Guard, uh, so again, I mean, what more proof do you need of the race, the racial divides in this country is like when you call for or not just a racial divide, but also the the ideological divide in this country of like when you call for uh, health care for everybody, not access to health care for everybody, but just he- get, like ha- making sure everybody just has health care uh, and, and saying, hey, uh, maybe cops should not murder black people. Because they, you know, are either just walking down the street or committed a misdemeanor at best. Uh, because it's perpetuated that black people are dangerous in America. And has that, that myth has continued to be perpetuated for hundreds of thousands of years. So when you approach these other things, they're like, oh, tear gas, rubber bullets, block off the streets, kettle the protesters, arrest all of them, and then, you know, get mad whenever... Uh, city, like, I'm behind a fucking Port Authority bus right now, but when those bus drivers refuse to uh, cart police officers down to protest lines and then take arrested protesters to jail. And now they have to kind of show faith, right? Because all this information has been revealed about what law enforcement actually is and what they actually represent that they are just bodyguards for rich people's stuff and they will collude with white supremacists as long as it means that rich people's stuff is safe from people fighting for equality. And now they're like, oh, we'll do something about it now. And so now they overcorrect. And and what we're seeing in D.C. is this overcorrection from law enforcement where they're like, bring in all the National Guard and bring in the military. We got drones but there's a guy, we, he made a robot. We don't know if the robot works, but we're going to equip it with a, uh, with a flamethrower. Uh, and uh, and uh, that's not technically RoboCop, but we've named it RoboCop. So now they have to overcorrect. In the, in, in the first place, if, if the cops wouldn't have treated black people the way that they've been treating black people, maybe they wouldn't have had to overcorrect because when you knew there were going to be thousands of people that had been ordered to storm the fucking Capitol, you would have actually hired the right amount of police officers 
uh, you know, to, to take care of that situation. So DC is basically like this ridiculous war zone. Manufactured to be that way now for the inauguration of Joe Biden. And it's a direct result of neoliberalism leading to neo-fascism. That's what it is. And what we've done is just restart that cycle. What we've done is, is take a step back and go, oh, did neoliberalism cause neo-fascism? What if we just go back to neoliberalism? No, 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 no. You can't do that. And all the people like myself, Jimmy Dore, Lee Camp, Ron Cone, Graham Elwood, Convo Couch with Fiorella and Pasta, uh, Nico House, the Action for Assange folks. Uh, I'm probably missing a, a shit ton of people that, that have said this. All those people were ostracized for, for calling out Joe Biden for what he is. He is a neoliberal that will lead to another neo-fascist. And look, if he doesn't survive, let's say in two years he has a stroke or, or, or the Democrats decide that he's mentally unfit to lead the nation and, and get rid of the dude and put, put Kamala Harris in charge and she gets to be president for four years, uh, she will also continue the reign of neoliberalism. And then in six years, we'll see neo-fascism. And we'll see a neo-fascism that's far worse than what Trump was. And this first point is going to essentially lock in this notion. Because, you know, everybody's talking about guests and what's the soundtrack going to be? And, oh, man, who's who are they wearing? What's Jill Biden going to be wearing? Who's Joe Biden wearing? Kamala Harris, what kind of pantsuit is she going to be wearing? There's all of this, oh, man, Major, what's the dog going to wear? Is he going to wear a sweater? Who are the guests of honor? Fall Out Boy is playing, you guys. Look how hip Joe and Kamala are because they're calling in Fall Out Boys. You know, the the artist that (laughs) whose bassist fucking freaked out at a concert and dove in and beat the shit out of somebody with his bass? Which I think, it, I think that's the follow up way is like the accurate representation of what the Biden administration is going to be. It's going to be a bunch of, it's going to be a bunch of like, you know, pop beats masquerading for just unfettered anger that's going to beat the shit out of a poor person that spent a lot of money to, to, to support them. It's good. It's a good band to have represent imperialism, isn't it? (laughs) Just some fucking vapid pop nonsense. Just just five dudes trying to wax poetic about their cocks. Being like, girls are difficult, aren't they? My cock. That's the whole. But like, put a little pop beat to it. Good. Anyway, uh, the point. Of, <laughs> sorry, I fucking. I hate Fall Out Boy. I'm not. I. I don't. I don't like that band. I never liked that band. There was like two songs where I was like, all right, this is a total garbage. Uh, One of the big prestigious guests that has been invited to the Biden and Biden inauguration um, are uh, Carlos Vecchio and Juan Guaido. Now, who is Carlos Vecchio for, for, for those that haven't been keeping up to date with the uh, with the bipartisan coup 
that America has been uh, trying to implement in Venezuela. Carlos Vecchio is a former Venezuelan Exxon lawyer turned into a fake ambassador. Uh, and Juan Guaido is the fake president of Venezuela. And Carlos Vecchio is now his lawyer. Okay, this is who these people are. Uh, th- these are bad people. And what they represent is, you know, the, what, they, what they really represent is, is, is American imperialism. They're, they're a brown face on American imperialism. The Latin American face of American imperialism. That's what they are. Now, there is a bipartisan support of America's coup in Venezuela. And, and, and it is a coup. There's almost... One, when the name Juan Guaido is brought up in Venezuela, most people are like, who... Are, are you talking about that guy that showed us his butthole? As protest? Yeah, we'd all like to protest that dude's butthole. It was very unnecessary. Uh, And that is a true thing. That is actually something that Guan Guado did. He mooned people as a form of protest. Uh, What was he protesting? Maybe just uh, the lack of buttholes. Maybe he was like, we need more buttholes in Venezuela and I will be the people's butthole. I will do that. My butthole is perfectly round. And this is the butthole that Venezuela needs. But there is a bipartisan support to this. Because Trump had him as a special guest, Guan Guaido, as a special guest during his State of the Union address. And the second that he introduced, that he was introduced, Nancy Pelosi fucking shot up from her seat to applaud the man. Had he not been in a balcony, I I would think that she would have just been schlobbing on his knob and Fall Out Boy would have written a new song about it. That would have been that would have been what happened, and then you know what what was the headline news of uh, of the day was uh, oh Nancy Pelosi ripped up Trump's speech oh my God what it she's such a yas queen you did it you yast everything you yas queen she's the yayest of all the queens proof that we're living in a compartmentalized monarchy. Uh, <laughs> We got the Yas Queen on one side and the King of All Turtles on the other side. Pelosi and McConnell, so. There's bipartisan support of that. Now, here's the thing. The UN and a shit ton of countries were like, hey, maybe you shouldn't just randomly decide who is going to be the president of a foreign country and meddle in their elections kind of seems like a fucked up thing to do when for four years all you did was talk about how terrible it is that another country would meddle in America's elections. And you spread that conspiracy theory around. And even people that disagreed were like, yep, other countries shouldn't be meddling in other countries' fucking elections. And yet here we are getting bipartisan support to meddle in another country's election. But America's... Somewhere in the Constitution is written is uh, do, uh, do as we say, not as we do. It's very meddlesome. It's very meddlesome. When countries are like, hey, didn't you say that's a bad thing, but you're doing that bad thing? And America's just like, can you just shut the fuck up? Okay, because th- you'll be next. Not only do most other countries in the UN recognize Nicolas Maduro as, as the legally elected president 
of, uh, of Venezuela. But Venezuela's elections are some of the most fair and best election processes. And, and international elect- election observers have said that about Venezuela's elections. They are some of the most fair and democratic elections in the whole world. They have multiple parties. They use exit polling. They use both electronic and paper ballots to ensure that uh, there is less fraud in the election process. And a corporation uh, doesn't get to uh, confirm your vote as it does in America. Which is kind of the funny thing is like, yes, there is election fraud in America. The Democrats have committed um, the election fraud against Bernie Sanders and virtually any third party in America. And when it comes to the general election, it's the Republicans that use gerrymandering, that use things like interstate cross-check, that fuck over the Postal Service. Both Democrats and Republicans have fucked over the Postal Service, by the way. And, you know, getting rid of hundreds and thousands of people from the voter rolls because they changed their address. What America practices is uh, electoral imperialism, where they go into another country, they claim their, their leader is not the right leader, and then they say, this guy, we found him in a fucking conservative think tank. He's, he's the guy. And everybody's like, who the fuck are you talking about? Now, what's funny about this, that Vecchio and Guaido are invited to Biden's inauguration, is, is uh, the fact that uh, Carlos Vecchio, the, the conservative opposition leader who was pissed off that Nicolas Maduro won, uh, did what Trump did. He, staged, he, he told his followers to attack the Capitol and stage a coup. To, to take the capital by storm, right? And Vecchio was part of that. He he encouraged people to do the do the same thing. He kept chanting, "No fear, no fear, no fear." And uh, and then after his bullshit coup attempt, he was going to be arrested and put in prison for thirteen years. So he fled to the America couple things on this. Biden considered what happened on January 6th to be disgusting and awful and enough is enough is enough. Remember when he said that on, on live television as, as he made a statement? And he was like, Trump should say something. Why isn't Trump saying something? And then, and at that point, Trump had already put out his weird I love you speech but while he was telling people to go home. A fucking bizarro speech that was. Well, if he considers what Trump did to be disgusting, then the same should go for Carlos Vecchio, who did the exact same thing and then participated in it. But Carlos Vecchio is invited to the inauguration, and Trump is demonized for basically doing the same thing. I don't know, Joey B, you're not even inaugurated, sending a lot of mixed messages if you ask me. Sounds like somebody's brain is confused. Trying to rationalize electoral imperialism and their hatred for Trump. And realizing that you have been in bed with someone that does the exact same things as this person you hate viscerally. And Biden does hate Trump viscerally. Again, the reason why Biden hates Trump viscerally has nothing to do with his demagoguery, but the fact that he is the perfect representation of what America is. Um,
And then, basically letting this guy come into the country uh, uh, to, to not face criminal charges for what he did. Whereas now, it's the FBI is like, can someone help us figure out who these people are? Because before we used to be friends with them, and then they defriended us from Facebook when we said we were going to investigate them, and now we don't have a way to keep in touch. They will offer someone that led a coup in Venezuela, failed coup, Venezuela, basically offering him asylum. But someone like Julian Assange has to be extradited for being a journalist that revealed American war crimes and American corporate crimes. And the fact that the CIA is, uh, is, is going against the Constitution. They've committed constitutional crimes. Seems like a discrepancy, doesn't it? And it is, and that is something that I think you can expect from the Biden administration uh, or the Harris administration. You can expect these hypocrisies. We've already seen it. And these hypocrisies are encouraged within the Democratic Party. It's part of the reason why everybody's, uh, all the progressives are so hard on this party. Why, whenever there are progressives that go in and say we're gonna we're gonna reform the system from within, which is impossible to do because the, because the Democratic Party is so corrupt and broken, and doesn't represent has and has never represented the will of the people, never, not once. You can maybe make the claim for FDR, but that's. It's still like a very thin justification because the dude was connected to the banking industry and the only reason why he did anything was because there was there was a, a upswell of general strikes across the country. That him and his fucking economic advisor uh, said was treason. FDR did. And when public pers- that when when that failed, and public persuasion was pro-general strike, he decided, okay, I should probably listen to what these people have to do and, and give you know, uh, unions more power and workers more power because if not, then this thing might, th- this thing might legitimately become a, a, a another you know, class war. So FDR's... Eh, a gray area at best. The problem is that these progressives aren't pushing Biden to the left. They're not pushing anybody to the left. They what they what they end up doing is that they left on uh, they they run on these super lefty policies, and then when they come into the party even though there's a coalition of them, they bend to the will of the, the party. What ends up happening to them is by being within the Democratic Party, they move further to the right. As the people that got them elected move further to the left. Another thing you'll probably see within the Democratic Party under Biden, uh, the Biden-Harris administration, is you'll see a lot of a lot of people that thought progressively and were, were championing a lot of progressive ideologies start making excuses and shifting further to the right. The, the Democratic Party diehards, right? And then the people that, that were barely hanging on to the Democratic Party are going to shift over to the left. And, I, and I've, I've said this in a prior uh, video before. But if you really want to make an impact to show the Democratic Party uh, that they are full of shit and that you're not going to take their garbage anymore, fucking leave the party. Re-register. If that happens en masse, if a couple hundred thousand people remove their registration from the Democratic Party, you don't think the party's going to notice? That's a thought that I had.
expect this level of hypocrisy. And electoral imperialism mixed with the regular imperialism that you would see from the Biden administration because that's what they're showing at the inauguration. By inviting Juan Guaido, the fake fucking president of Venezuela, and his fucking coup plotting former oil executive lawyer to the fucking inauguration. They played their fucking hands, man. And they're showing it to you. And those Democratic diehards are going, that's fine, I guess. We'll do some sort of mental gymnastics and live in the lie so we can be complacent and go get our fucking mimosas for brunch. And pretend that fascism only exists in the right wing. To pretend that when Biden comes in, all of the bad things will go away. They will. They'll just get swept under the rug and they'll operate under the rug. Because there's a hatch under the rug. And that hatch leads to all the secret bullshit that you've ignored. That all of a sudden you started paying attention to when when Trump showed up. Because you didn't want that to be what America looked like. Not only is what Trump... Not only is is Trump what America looks like, it's what America behaves like, it's what America represents, it's the ideologies that America carries. And that's what pissed people off the most, because even liberals have this hyper-individualistic, nationalistic pride. They believe America to be number one, that they're the best democracy in the world. And only if they have someone from their Democratic Party, someone that's a little bit more liberal, will will they uphold that level of number one-ism and and nationalism that they have. No, no, but Trump is what that is. And Biden's no different. They just showed you who they are. Showed you that they're imperial coup plotters that are willing to accept people from a different country that has oil that they want, they'll accept those people and they've done the exact same thing that they condemn in America. They are hypocritical electoral imperialists. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe- uh, un- unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video. Thanks again.